Hey everyone. So in this video, I figured I would go over all the new stuff that got included in the 1.5.1 release a few weeks ago, if you haven't already perused through the release notes here. So the first thing is some new features that they added, having to deal with some time series data, such as detecting seasonality. And along with that, they also added the ability for anomaly detection to remove seasonality from the time series before doing that anomaly detection. They added ranking in the auto ML API. And they also added cross validation support for ranking, probably to support this auto ML API addition. They added a new estimator, the count target encoding estimator here. That transforms categorical columns that you put into it into a set of features like the count of each label in that class. A few enhancements. They're always working on Onyx enhancements, so they've got quite a few here, including a sample conversion. Now, speaking of samples, by the way, these new features, if you go into the pull requests, they will often have a sample in there. So here in the Microsoft Samples project, they have a sample of how to use what they added. So that's always helpful. Some new features for old transformers, such as replacing missing values. Now it has a mode as a replacement method instead of, uh, I think, mean, min, and max are the current replacement methods. And one thing I added here, before they were using buffer blocks, and I added to change that to use the threading channels NuGet package for some concurrency there. Command timeout when using the database loader. And this was helpful because some people have some large databases and they wanted to use the database loader, but because the database was so large, the default timeout would come into play and they wouldn't get all their data. This was so they can specify that timeout so they can wouldn't run into that problem anymore. It was an enhancement to the text loader to load empty float and double fields as, as null values instead of just zero. So better for things like the replace missing values can better find those values. A few bug fixes here. Ones I really want to call out here. There are a few. Uh, let's see, improve exception messages, improve error message, and more, and like three different bug fixes to improve error messages. So when you actually do have those messages, you're better, you have more information so you can fix them easier, which is always helpful. A few test updates, but also some documentation updates. It's always helpful for more documentation updates. And breaking changes, uh, there are none. I don't think since version 1, I don't think there have been any breaking changes, which is which is nice. Now, for some of these new features, I'll probably make separate videos on them, such as uh, the with time series stuff and the count target encoding estimator, but I just wanted to take a quick video to go over some of the, the changes. And the team works hard on this, so it's good to kind of give them some credit on, on all the cool stuff that they do here. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.